super fast. Welcome back, everyone. Um, this week we're going to discuss the uh, heating arrangements. So, uh, basically, how to make yourself and your passengers comfortable and defrost that windshield. So, I'm going to interface the uh, Subaru stock heater system into the uh, VW bus. So, follow along. Here we have a heater blower, a multimeter uh, with a amperage uh, clamp on it and a battery and a battery charger connected to this right now. I'm just going to be testing uh, this heater blower that we have here and uh, just have some jumpers uh, go into the battery. We're gonna measure the uh, amperage being pulled. In the orientation we have here with the top connector going to ground and the bottom connector going to uh, positive. Let's uh, see what happens. Looks like we're pulling about 5 amps. And the next thing we're going to do is the, uh, with the way it's connected here, the top connector going to the positive battery terminal. And the bottom going to uh, negative. So let's take a look. So we're actually pulling 22 and a half amps in this configuration. Super fast. Well now we know that this is the intake and this is the output here. It struck me that since we'll probably end up having to use the side of the case um, to house our heat exchanger, um, why not make use of the controls and the uh, flaps as well? So um, it's actually kind of cool. The red wire uh, hooks up to positive battery and these two are the control wires. So whichever one you ground will perform the different function. So let's ground this one here. And it's actually gonna open up, let's call it the fresh air vent. So with the blower on, it will pull fresh air uh, kind of a from the underneath on this housing. Now if the heat exchanger was mounted right here for example then no hot air would be coming through. Now let's ground the other side and it opens right up and seals off the fresh air so that we can get hot air coming through. After a ton of finagling and um, trying to get access and different placements and so forth I finally settled with taking the uh, space of the glove box, at least part of it, um, halfway or so. Uh, in any case, it's going to interface into the um, cold air uh, connection here, and it's going to come around, blow out these guys, and the defroster. This will just enable us to uh, mount the um, heat exchanger right there and give us pretty good access in case we need to do maintenance and so forth. Here's the heater box as it would sit in the bus. Um, here's the output and this section over here is where the heat exchanger is going to sit and it's just going to pull air through the heat exchanger. So it's going to sit like that and I cut all the extraneous brackets and stuff off uh, just to make it fit a little easier into that spot. It's pretty tight and I was also playing with so many different configurations that I just decided to cut all these little mounting tabs and brackets off. What we're going to do is cut a hole for this for this output here. The hole is only going to be about two and three quarter inches and then what I'm gonna do is actually flip you know I'm only gonna cut three sides on the metal tin inside the bus and then flip it up so that it seals off this portion here. So looking through the glove box cavity you can see that I've outlined where I'm gonna draw or where I'm gonna cut the hole. So it's just gonna be a square three-sided hole. I'm gonna bend that flap up and then put some um, foam around there so it's a good solid tight fit. Here's the hole that was cut and the flap that whipped up there. 
There is a little bit of a crease right here, as you can see. Um, well, just the difference, it's not perfectly flat. But I'm hoping that I can get the uh, foam to kind of seal. All right, so we have the uh, heater mechanism mounted. Um, just made a couple brackets, one here that connects to the uh, metal on the dash, and then one below, which connects to the heater uh, ducting and the fan shroud. And uh, it's pretty secure. It's not moving. Using a tubing uh, cutter, I cut uh, some of the extra tubing off of these top flanges on the uh, heat exchanger. So I think I'm gonna roll with it like this because uh, it's simple and um, I can fit two hose clamps on and uh, there's not a whole lot of room to work with it. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and fit it and we'll see how it works. Here we have the uh, heat exchanger installed. Um, I couldn't think of another way to do it other than zip ties. Maybe something will come to me at some point. But for now, this is this works fantastic. I just drilled a couple holes on each side and uh, routed a zip tie through. Um, you can see it's pretty tight up here. So um, the next move is to run a heater hose from here back to the engine. To get the uh, coolant to the heater core, I decided that I'm gonna go with uh, EMT conduit. This is just half inch galvanized conduit, essentially. Um, so the, the reactivity between this and aluminum is pretty low, lower than stainless steel, apparently. So uh, you also notice that it's the perfect length for the bus. So um, using that conduit bender, I'm just going to um, try and sneak it under the, uh, the uh, skid plates that I have and uh, tie the ends in with uh, just 5 8 inch heater hose. Uh, the last little bit of the second conduit going in, um, if you can see, it's just ducking through these bits, these holes here in the frame. and. Um, Basically, it's a straight shot. So toward the transmission, I'm just gonna bend one like 45 degree turn and we'll be good. Uh, it's pretty hard to see, but um, kind of where my finger is pointing, that's the output for the heater on the engine. So it's a straight shot, so I'm just gonna bend it right about here and uh, duck over the CV joint and uh, we should be right in line. Here are the heater lines, and they bend up and around the uh, lower cross member um, axle tube here, and or torsion tube that is, and they're terminating near the starter. So there's still a little bit of play, and I'm gonna go ahead and get the T's arranged for um, just in case you want to shut off the uh, heater up front. Uh, the thermostat won't be starved. Uh, what I've done here is I've got a two T's basically. Uh, these are three quarter inch and these are half inch right here. And so this is going to provide a little bit of a bypass so that if you have the on off uh, valve on the front end, say it's summertime and you don't want heat going up there, uh, coolants will come through this path instead so that your thermostat still gets um, heat and can open up. So what we're going to do is take the loop that we have installed in the uh, on the heater circuit on the Subaru engine and basically just plug this guy in and then these are going to tie to the two um, steel pipes that we have installed. Looking at the heater circuit coming out of the engine here, uh, wh what I've done is I've clamped both connections and I'm just going to cut, install our T's, and place them onto these pipes. It's a little tough to see now, but the T's are installed on the heater circuit and they're going to the metal pipe. Uh, I've actually connected up the uh, rubber hoses. Uh, it enters right into this existing uh, hole into the cabin and we'll take a look at uh, where it goes up and into the heater core.
Okay, here's the front wall, and uh, you can see the hoses actually come up and go behind the washer fluid bottle. They cruise up and they um, terminate here at the heater core. Now, I've put a switch here, a manual um, uh, valve. Now, what this will do is basically turn off the heat in the summer or, you know, whenever, just so it's not constantly running through when it's blazing hot outside. You can cut it off and uh, no heat will be coming through this, which would be very beneficial. Well, now it's time to connect up the blower and the... Uh, fan or the flap control. So on the left side here of this uh, quick little wiring diagram, um, we'll go over the blower. So here's the blower here. Um, we've got 12 volt ignition to a three-way switch. So when it's in the middle, it's off. Uh, and then on the ends, it's low and high. So if we come back out, you can see that we're using uh, two relays. Now these are double throw relays, which means they have five pins. And when nothing is passing through the coil, um, it defaults to, we're gonna default it to ground. So it's actually just gonna go to ground when they do not have signal from the switch coming through them. So what this will allow us to do is operate the uh, reversed polarity or standard polarity on uh, the blower for high and low. That's just the way we're going to have to do it for, uh, for controlling that. So we have the battery down here um, and a fuse uh, right here. What that's going to do is go into the, um, the bottom of the, uh, well actually it's pin 87. So 87 and then the other side uh, is 87A. Now that's the one that defaults. So uh, we're going to take a look at this diagram and I'm going to show you how the relay actually works and then we'll, uh, we'll go from there. All right, on my tester, um, on my leads here, I've got it so it's audible when there's um, continuity. Okay, so um, these two ends, uh, this would be the positive from the ignition, uh, ignition hot. So this is like from the, uh, the switch, the three-way switch. And then this goes to ground over here. Notice there's no continuity right now. And there's no continuity on any of these right now to, to this one. So when there's no continuity, or when there's no uh, power to this guy, we're gonna take um, our, gr our ground and connect it to here. This is just gonna go straight to ground. See how it's connected when there's no uh, signal coming through? That's gonna go to ground. And this does not have continuity to this bottom one. So this connection that the red uh, lead is on is gonna go to the blower. So when we flip the switch, these th uh, this will actually connect to this one, and I'll show you that. All right, right now I've got uh, the lead from the switch and just a ground here. And you'll see that we still don't have continuity between these two, but we do between 87A and the bottom. Okay, now I'm gonna flip the switch you hear the relay turn on, the coil is activated. So now we will not have continuity between 87A and the bottom, but we will at the top. So we'll then connect the top to um, fused battery. So at that point, if we run two of these, we'll be able to control the polarity on the heater leads. We have a proof of concept here. Um, I've got my digital multimeter uh, set to read voltage. That's connected to the uh, heater uh, connector. And then um, we've got the two relays. Basically what I've done is on these two left pins here, we've got control from the switch. So it being a proof of concept, I'm not really worried about like 
making it neat right now. But um, here's our switch. So the two white wires control. So those are basically from ignition on. So switch high, switch is this one, switch low, switch is this one. Um, then we've got power on pin 87 on this five pin relay. And then uh, we've got these little jumper clips. Um, it's probably pretty hard to see in this video, but these jumper clips are basically jumping the ground pin on the right hand side here to the center pin 87A. So those are just going to ground. And then the bottom right there on both sides is the output to the heater. So for now, I'm just going to hit the switch. Right now it's off and we see zero, nothing. So let's hit the switch here. So in one direction, we have 12.75 volts. Let's hit the other direction. And we have 12.75 volts. So now I'm just gonna hook up the heater real quick. I have a spare heater. The heater motor is clamped to the work table here and uh, we've got the relays wired and we have the switch, so let's hit it. That's low, turn it off, and let's go to high. Yeah, everything works great. So now we're gonna just clean up the wiring and uh, get it installed. Before we install the uh, wiring, I'll show you the flap control diagram. So here are the flaps, here's our battery, here's our switch. What we're gonna do is actually just switch ground. The center of the three-way switch is going to ground, then the two outsides are controlling the flaps. So I just label them cool and hot. So cool air and hot air as it's pulling through the uh, heater core. So the two wires then go up and uh, interface with the connector on the, um, the flap control. Okay, here's our switch. The two outsides are going uh, to control hot or cool. The center is actually going to the negative on my power supply here. And from the power supply we have hot, and that's actually, if we follow that, it's actually going to the connector and that's the red and black wire on this particular connector. So then we've got the hot and the cool. So uh, let's take a look. So right now I've got it, the switch in the off position so I'm going to switch ground and it's pulling closed. Now you can just leave it here because once it state, you know, once it's uh, finished its its cycle, it actually has an auto shut off and it won't continue drawing amperage. So you can actually leave the switch in this position. But then, uh, if we switch it back to the um, hot side, because this is cool, because the heater um, uh, heat exchanger mounts right here. Um, so it's going to actually uh, cool. It's going to be pulling cabin air. That's cool. So then if we switch the switch the other direction, it actually opens up and now we're in the hot mode. And once again, you can just leave the switch in this position and it's not drawing anything. Uh, I made sure to test that. So now we can go ahead and get everything installed. Here we have the wiring all set for uh, installation in the van. Uh, I actually found this cool bracket in my little bit of a junk pile, so I mounted the relays onto that, and that's going to mount to the heater blower box. And uh, i got the fuse holder here. It's going to interface with uh, an ignition on source. Here we have the wiring all set for uh, installation in the van. Uh, I actually found this cool bracket in my little bit of a junk pile, so I mounted the relays onto that and that's going to mount to the heater blower box. All right, it's about just a little bit warmed up. It's 84, 85 degrees Celsius and uh, after filling up the coolant levels um, and kind of letting it sit here and, and rev a little bit, uh, we've got
got some pretty good heat in the in the core so I'm gonna um, test it out in the morning and see if uh, I've got good heat I decided to clean up the install just a little bit and added uh, a small glove box so I just uh, pulled some carpet from a uh, another Subaru that I have uh, part Subaru and um, it actually is backed by some Coroplast plastic, so it's super secure in here. And uh, man, you can fit at least five documents in there. <laughs> anyway, uh, you might even be able to fit a pair of gloves, but uh, that totally cleans up the install, so you don't even see um, you don't see any of the heating equipment. And I tried out the heater this morning, and uh, and it worked great. I'm stoked. It uh, it comes out these vents here, these here, and these here. Now the stock defrost actually comes out of these here and these here, but I don't have it plumbed up. My bus didn't come with that, this connector piece. So that would be another option for folks if uh, you wanted to plumb it into here or mount the heater box under the rear seat and plumb it that way it would go out the stock vents but um, probably lose a lot of heat going through the drafty um, tubes underneath the bus so once again we finished up another portion of the project um, finishing off the heater install um, I am really happy with the way it turned out Obviously, there's a million ways to skin a cat, so, you know, if you felt like putting it under the rear seat, um, piping it under different, or into different ducting, then go for it. This is just the way that I did it, and it worked out great for me. So, thanks for watching the heater install, and uh, we'll pick up another portion of the project here next week.